is calling me to a higher place of praise. Let's say that one more time. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. To stand upon the mountain and to magnify his name. To tell all the people of every nation that he reigns. Zion is calling me. Zion. Zion is calling me. Zion. Zion is calling me. Zion. Zion. Is calling me. Zion is calling me. One more time. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The part that, that was resonating is Zion is calling me. Hallelujah. 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 If Zion is calling you, are you answering the call? Hallelujah. Zion is calling me to a higher place. Ugh. Glory to God. A higher place of praise. Not to stay on the level that I'm on, but it's calling me higher. Hey, that's Jesus. Jesus calls us higher. Not to stay in the same place. Hallelujah. I shouldn't be in the same place I was last year. Hallelujah. I shouldn't be in the same place I was at the beginning of the year. Hallelujah. If I'm seeking his faith, hallelujah, there should be a higher place of praise. Zion is calling me. Zion is calling me. It's calling me to a higher place of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, God is so good. Thank the Lord for being here one more time. Thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that mercy that endures forever. Hallelujah, giving honor to God, the pastor, all the ministers and the saints of God. Praise God for his long suffering and bringing us together one more time. Hallelujah, we're going to go into our Sunday school where Evangelist Clark is our teacher on this morning. Thank the Lord for being back into that sanctuary. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He, he's been good to us. He gave us a wonderful women's retreat. Hallelujah. And we're back here on today. Glory to God. Refresh, revive, and renew. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go before the throne of grace and then turn the service over into the hands of our teacher for this morning. Glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah, thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God, we thank you. Hallowed be your name. Hallelujah, that name that's above every name, that name that, that, signifies power that name that, that came hallelujah that blessed name the name that you gave us hallelujah to go before us to live in us to engulf us that name 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 of Jesus hallelujah at the name of Jesus that name that name where every knee shall bow hallelujah that name that name that can't nobody touch 
that name where all the other little gods try to try to mimic but that name that name hallelujah hallelujah thank you for that name thank you for the privilege that you've given us to use that name Hallelujah. By the power of that name, we're standing here today. By the power of that name, we're saved today. By the power of that name, hallelujah, glory to God, we are free today. By the power of that name, strongholds are loose. By the power of that name, we have hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallowed be that name. Glory to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, by the power of that name, hallelujah, we speak healing. Hallelujah, by the power of that name, hallelujah, we speak freedom. By the power of that name, there is liberty. Hallelujah, by the power of that name, there is grace and mercy. Hallelujah, by the power of that name, God, we speak comfort. Hallelujah. For those, hallelujah, that have gone through, hallelujah, think they can't make it any further, hallelujah, but the, by the power of that name, the power of that name, hallelujah, let it saturate the airways, let it go into every home, hallelujah, hallelujah, everyone under the sound of our voice, everyone that will come later under the sound of our voice, the power of that name, let the power of that name Hallelujah. Work the wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Work the wonder. Hallelujah. Work a wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust the power of that name. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. Hallelujah. And we thank you for the power of that name. Hallelujah. We just want you to know you're welcome in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For the rest of the day, you're welcome. Hallelujah. We just vessels. We just vessels. Hallelujah. But allow us to be vessels of honor. Hallelujah. Submit it to you. Hallelujah. Seeking to please you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we want the atmosphere set for the rest of the day. Hallelujah. So as long as you are pleased, Hallelujah. As long as no flesh glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We repent for anything that comes to hinder your work. Anything that stands between you and what you want to do. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Because at the power of that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody walk in the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're looking for transformation. We're looking for wholeness. We're looking for wellness, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But let us be the vessels. Let us be the light. Let us be the example. Hallelujah. 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 By the power of that name. That name, Jesus. <laughs> That name, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we'll forever give you the glory. We'll forever give you the honor. That's due your name. We love you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Yes, it. Hallelujah. Oh, to God. To God. Be the glory for the thing he has done. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, by the power of that name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Our morning scripture is coming out of Psalms 1. It says, blessed 
is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth. For the Lord knoweth. For the Lord knoweth. For the Lord know it. That means he will continue to know. He knew, he know, and he will know. Glory, the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the doers, the reader of his word. Glory to God. We get ready to turn this service over into the hands of the the teacher, oh, but by the power of that name, we're moving. By the power of that name as she comes, the power of that name. Ah, he know it. He know it. He know it. Hallelujah. What do you need him to know? What are you looking for him to know? Hallelujah. What are you going through that the devil thinks you're in it by yourself? What are you going through where the devil lets you feel like you're on an island? Hallelujah. The Lord know it. The Lord know it. The Lord know it. Turn it into the hands of our teacher in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, and I thank God for being here on this morning. I thank God for just who he is. I thank God for all the many blessings he has afforded unto me. Up until this present time, I thank God for just being God. And him letting, also letting me know that he's God. It's one thing to hear it, but when you come into the knowledge of the fact that he, he is God, what do you do with what you know? I thank God. I thank God for just being in his presence. He is a wonderful God. I don't take it lightly. These Sunday school lessons are awesome. They are awesome. They bring... They bring such enlightenment to what you would feel you already know. But sometimes, sometimes some things have to be broken down to the simplest form. Everybody's not on the same learning level or they're not on the same understanding level. And not saying nobody's silly or, or just you know illiterate in anything, but sometimes you want the word broken down. And I thank God for these Sunday school books because they it, it, it's so simple. They break it down to the simplest form. And it's for, for everyone. So I thank God for being here. I thank giving honor to God, to my pastor, my first lady, Lady P, Pastor P. I thank God for just being in the land of the living. This morning I woke up, I, I had to, I, I felt like the, I had a bad, I had a bad, it felt like I had a bad cold. And so I said, no, now I'm not going to sit up here. You, 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 Every morning, this has been going on. So, but the thing is, what I, what I do is I get up and I say, well, you know what? I'm going on anyhow. Because when it's work, I push. You know, because can't nobody go to work for you. You know what I mean? Because they, they, they can't clock in for you. So when you think about it, 
when it comes down to what God has called you to, can't nobody clock in for you. Can't nobody do what he's called you to do. You can't pass that on to somebody else because God has called you to do it. So it's not for me to, I, I, I do everything because he's been so good to me. It's not, let me just do this because I don't want nobody to, no, I appreciate God for choosing me. I'm honored that he would even trust me with, with the word of God to bring and to share with you. So there's an appreciation for just him calling me. There's an appreciation for him even choosing me to carry the word of God, to share the word of God. I don't take that lightly for anything. So sometimes when you don't feel good, you still go. Sometimes when you, you, you are in, sometimes you are having a trial, but you still encourage somebody else. Because this, this is not about a self-preservation thing unless you, when you make sure you prayed up. That's the part of self-preservation in this. But when you realize it is not about you, it's about the kingdom of God. So here this morning, our lesson this morning is the first, last meal. And this is talking about the widow woman. And here our focus verse is in 1 Kings 17, 14. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crudes of oil fall until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Lesson text, 1 Kings 7, it's coming out of 1 Kings 17, 1 through 16. The truth about God. God rewards our sacrifice. Truth for my life. I will obey God's call to sacrifice. When I go back to this focus verse, I, you know, like I said, sometimes you need it broken down. So I was like, okay, God, I hear this part. And so I said, I, I want to understand it to the full, fullest. And it was simple with no, with two words. He drew me to something that he let me know it was two words. No lack. There was going to be no lack in her house. And so now you look at the text and it says all these words. But the simplest form of it, it was no lack. So here, the icebreaker is, what is the hardest step of faith you ever, you have ever taken? I love these questions because it makes you think. It said, what was the hardest step of faith? Now, we all can say to receive the Holy Ghost. That was one of the hardest because you had to go into an unknown. But think back when you had to trust God, when you didn't see. When you didn't see no way. Now, I'm talking about after salvation. This didn't say before or after, but I'm saying, what is the hardest step? Of, what was the hardest step of faith you had to do after salvation? Anybody, Brother Troy?
I know one of mine, I had several, but one of mine was stepping into ministry. And when he called me, I know what I heard. And I felt what I heard. Because see, some, when God's talking to you and when God is, he has, he's depositing and he's calling you. Or he's calling you higher. Let me say it like that. You not only hear him, you feel him. Okay, do anybody wit can anybody witness to that? You not only hear him, you feel him. Because the presence is he's in your presence. And the flesh it, it responds because it's it's a it's a way it's a feeling that you get because you're like, okay, God is saying something to me. And so being called to ministry. Now, mind you, it was in prayer. It was in prayer service. So I'm like, he here talking to everybody. That's me. But then he took me to another place. And I could, it was more or less like I couldn't see anybody else. He made it to where I couldn't see anybody else, even with my eyes open. And I felt him, I felt, uh, I felt myself being not suspended in the air, but stood up. And I felt myself, I heard the sound of metal, heavy metal, or heavy, it, it sounded like metal, rather. And I felt myself being stood up, and I felt someone dressing me. And I was being fitted for armor, for battle. I was being dressed. Now here I am, still not seeing nobody. I'm in more. I'm in prayer. Now here, I'm thinking I'm saying yes. But there's an understanding to yes that you have to get to. And I'm getting, this is, believe it or not, this is in the lesson. I mean, this, not this, what I'm telling you, but this, this is the part of the lesson. I was being fitted for, with armor. Even though I was saying yes with my mouth, I was saying yes in prayer and everything because I knew I was in the presence of God and I was saying yes to whatever he wanted me to do. But the understanding of it, I still needed to get. But he fitted me, he was fitting me for battle. And I knew it because I heard them putting it on my arms and putting the, putting the arm on my chest and my legs and everything. I didn't put it on me. I was being fitted. And so after everything was done and then I was still saying, yes, I was on the floor. Now, mind you, how did I go from there to on the floor? And so I was just rolled around. Now, afterwards, I said yes. And this was a couple of nights. And I have witnesses, Vengeance Owens, my mother, Bishop E. And so finally, when I, uh, I had to come to him, Bishop E didn't come to me. I went to him when I understood and I said, God is calling me to ministry. 
And he said, yes, I heard him calling. But he never told me he heard him call me. He waited until I told him. Now, there was a reason for that, because I had to take it on. And when I took it on, and it was a whole nother level when you take it on. It's a whole nother thing that happens inside of you when you just say yes, and you take it on. And so that when it happened, now, mind you, just because I said yes, that then instantly put me in the pulpit. When I said yes to him, and I began to continue to say yes, then there was a whole, like, oh, my God, there was a fear that came. Because it's like, okay, God, you calling me to ministry. But all I'm, now, this was my thought because of how I was raised. I'm, I'm supposed to be a seasoned saint. What's going on? You know, and me being thinking, this is me being, let me say carnal. A seasoned saint had to be somebody that was saved a while before they came into ministry. But that was not the case. He called who he will. And he qualifies who he called. So when it happened, okay, I, 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 I said, okay, I said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Now here is Bishop Jr., Elder Gentry at the time. And he said, okay, he said yes to the call. And I said yes to the journey. Because you have things to learn. You have things to do. You have things. To, and he said, now you say yes to the journey of the call. As I said, there's an understanding. There's sacrifices. There's all these things that you have to say yes to. Now, are you willing to do that? Because just because you said yes, because you just didn't want to be rolling on the floor and everything else, you still have another level of sacrifice. You still have another level of yes. That's when first lady was saying, Zion is calling for a higher place of praise. We can't just stay at the same level. Each time to say, we used to sing this song as little kids, every round goes higher and higher. Anybody that just gets saved and just want to stay at a level. When there's higher heights and deeper depths in God, you don't just stay there. I want to know as much as I can about God. Because each time I learn something new, he becomes more to me. He, he pours more into me. We walk closer together the more you know somebody. So here, I did, and when I said, when he told me that, he said, now, no fear, just you say yes to the journey. I went home, and I had to think about all of that. And I thought about it, thought about it. It scared me. It really scared me because here I am. And coming from the background that I came from, and then living my life the way I did, and I said, Lord, me. But then when I, I had to think about if he brought me out, it's some more that got to come out. There's some things I need to do because now I've seen the other side. I felt the deliverance. I've had experience of deliverance. I know what he can do. I'm a living witness. So I started, I began to understand my yes. And I began to say yes. But that was the hard, one of the hardest steps of faith that I had to take. So when you think about the step faith, when you think about the step of faith, it goes beyond you. You never see, faith is not seeing what everything God said. Step is, faith is believing. It goes past believing. I, I may not understand it, God, but I'm going to believe you. 
I don't have to believe it. I believe you. If you said it, then it must be. That's what faith is. Because you will see a whole lot of things. But I don't have to believe it what I see. I have to believe what he said. And I say it often. I got. I know what I see. But I got what he said. And I, I and I have to keep continue to walk in that way in ministry. Because you can see some whole lot of ugly, but you got what he said. So here in this lesson, and it's not a big lesson. It's not a big lesson at all. And we're taught here in the lesson, we're to go into the outline. It said the drought. And it said, why do you think God sometimes has to resort to extreme measures? Because people have to believe. You have more than doubters. They go beyond doubters. Some people are just naysayers. Some people will, some people will say things because they don't want somebody else to get something. Because they don't want you to move up. They don't want you to believe what God has said about you. They don't want you to grab hold of anything. They want, they love, you know what? Misery love company. And if they can, can misery can keep a crowd, misery will keep a crowd. Just as long as nobody, see, things don't happen until you try to do better than what you're doing. The enemy has no reason to fight you when you ain't trying to do better. Everybody's like, whoo, I'm just living good. I have nothing, you know, I, the enemy don't bother me. I wouldn't brag about that. Why? Because I wouldn't brag about the enemy don't bother me because that means you are too much on his territory and you are too much his friend. I'm not the friend of the enemy. I'm not the friend of the, the, of, of the devil. He don't like me and I don't like him. And what happens when people don't like you? They let you know they don't like you. Or they convince other people not to like you. But sometimes God has to go to extreme measures because he wants you to make a choice. He like, one thing about it, it, throughout this life, and I know if other people have experienced it, throughout this walk in life, you come to many forks in the road. And some are easy to make, some decisions are easy, but then you got someone, you'd be like, wait a minute, if I do this, I'm going to be the one jacked up. Or so you think. But is it, the, is it the right decision to make? You may, it may feel like you jacked up, but is it the right decision? Because sometimes doing the right thing, it don't always feel good. You know how they say, why do I always got to be the bigger person? Because the great one lives in me. I think about when I was going through this thing on my job. It was, everybody was cool and dandy as long as I wasn't trying to promote. The minute I started filling out stuff to promote, and I started going through some type of background. When I tell you they tried to turn my background topsy-turvy and actually got mad because I, because they wanted to really take it out on me because I didn't go through backgrounds for the position I have now and stated it. You mean to tell me you didn't go through backgrounds? To be the to get in this position you are now, I said no, I didn't go to the background check. I came from the trains and they, I took the test and then they, but you yeah, so they didn't do nothing. They did they just sent you here. I said yeah. They didn't like, they didn't like that. So what did they do? They took me topsy turvy through this one. So, but it wasn't what nothing said. Was nobody trying to. Set me up, write me up, all this kind of stuff. Not until I was going through background. 
Now, everybody quiet. Because I got my disqualifying it. Now, everybody quiet. Everybody, you know, everybody want to say, oh, hey, Diane, good morning. Good morning. Now, everybody want to do that. That's fine. But don't, that's the enemy. The enemy ain't going to do nothing until you, as long as he got you where he wants you. Now, mind you, he didn't take your Holy Ghost. He didn't, he didn't fight you for the Holy Ghost. What he did, he just made you just be settled where you are. If he can keep you in one spot and you and God is calling you higher, God is requiring more of you, but you don't, as long as you the enemy, like I ain't got to do nothing to him, he's gonna stay right there. No. And mind you, if God is is requiring you to do this, if he's calling you to do the guess what? Not doing it is what? Huh? Thank you. Not doing what he's calling you to do. Now, see, when you may think, well, God know my heart. He, I'm da, 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 da. But when you're disobedient, it's sin. Evangelist Owens. And first lady.
That's it. That's it. That's the. That's it. Now he, he says, "A the widow's desperate situation, b the prophet's unusual request." Then they say, "How should we respond when God's command doesn't seem to make sense?" Well, duh. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Then it said, I will trust God even when I don't see his plan. Then it said, what do you what do you need the Lord to provide for you right now? That's rhetorical. Then it said, God's provision for Zarephath. Why do you think God sometimes reaches outside the walls of the church to provide miracles? Then it says, A, the widow's faith filled response. B, God's miraculous provision. Then it says, C, I will obey God's call to sacrifice. Then it said, what do you need to step out by faith and do right now? So we're going to um, in the lesson, we're going to go to the lesson connection. In the lesson connection, is talking about um, selflessness, talking about sacrifice. And in this, in this lesson connection, it's talking about when the when particular soldiers was on a, a ship and the ship got hit with missiles. They didn't have time to to react. They didn't have time to. Shuffle. They even they didn't even have enough lifeboats and life jackets for everybody. Now they had chaplains on the boat. I mean, on the ship. Excuse me. During all this going on, the ship was sinking. Here it is. The chaplains could have saved themselves. But here it is, they saw some soldiers with no hope. And they gave the soldiers life jackets. Knowing what could have happened to them. And knowing what did, it, it, afterwards, it did happen to them. But here it is, they said, I'm going to give them the chance to go home because I did what God told me to do. He gave them the life jacket. Now that's a message within itself. They could have kept it for themselves, but because they felt this is their thinking, but we, you know, this is what my life is supposed to be, to sacrifice for someone else. And so they gave them the life jacket. And so this was basically the 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 the, con the uh, lesson connection. It's about sacrifice. It was talking about sacrifice. It began with talking about Elijah. Then it went to the the um, the military, and it talked about all these men on the boat heading to someplace that they knew they were going to be used to sacrifice themselves for who, whatever they were fighting for. We're in the military, so I may not come home. I'm headed to a place that I may not come home from. But before they got there, they were hit. Now, here it is. You can't even save yourself because you're on a sinking ship. But it's not enough lifeboats. Not enough life jackets. Now, that part I could never understand. You knew how many people you were going to have on that boat. 
So how come nobody have, you know what I'm saying? But the point of it was, there was men with no life jackets and the chaplains um, sacrificed themselves for those men. Because they said they had men there with no hope. So they gave a life jacket, but gave them hope of survival. And then it, the last paragraph up here, it says, God may not call us to make ultimate sacrifice, make the ultimate sacrifice and show the greatness type and show the greatest type of love by giving your life for another. John 15, 13. Nevertheless, we may be called to sacrifice in the face of difficult circumstances. In these cases, remember the faith and commitment of these military chaplains, as well as the act of faith demonstrated by the widow who followed the direction of the Lord and sustained Elijah with food. The Lord rewarded her sacrifice by providing her and her son without the famine. Now we go into the lesson. That's the lesson, though. That's the lesson. And as I was sitting there, and I, when I was reading and looking over last night, um, and I always say, Lord, give me what to say to your people out of the lesson. What do you want them to get? And so, but this is the lesson. But I w looked at the wording of this, and it said, the Lord rewarded her sacrifice. He rewarded her sacrifice. He saw the sacrifice she made. See, it don't matter who you are. No matter who you are, he looked at the sacrifice that was made. So it didn't matter the title. It didn't matter what she said. It didn't matter if they out there in the street or in the church. He saw the sacrifice presented to him. And when a sacrifice is, is presented in its purest form, in its purity, God sees it. People may think that sometimes it's a sacrifice just if somebody's standing out there at the gate and they listening because they just thinking I'm too dirty to come in or whatever, but I'm going to stand here while they have a service and listen. I can hear them from here, and I just want to hear. Guess what? God's paying attention to that. And if they did it and said, you know, one day I'm going to go in there. One day God going to let me go in there because they don't feel like it's just their, their minds telling them, I'm not clean enough. You know, I smell or whatever. Guess what's going to happen? Somehow or another, that's going to change and they're going to come in. But the sacrifice to stand there and listen, because somebody going to say to them, man, why are you just standing up here just da 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 I just, you telling me I can't stay? No, you, you know, you get what I'm saying? Somebody going to have something to say about what you do anyway. But the sacrifices don't care. First lady. No, it don't. The sacrifice. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Right. Yeah, because he noticed her sacrifice. And here it is, when you read when you when you read this lesson throughout this lesson, it says it was a lot of widows in his day. It was a lot of widows in his day during that famine. That's when I say I'm I I I, I bless God because He chose me. Because there could have been another whole another widow He could have went to, but because she was unctioned first before He asked. She was unctioned first before he asked. And, and here, it, I, I, I love this. That's because so much in it. And, it, it. and like I said, when I was back there, when First Lady was uh, singing about Zion and calling to a higher place, and God just let me hear something. He said, when faith connects, When my faith connect with your faith, when we have altar calls and say we stand, we we when you come to come believing already, and then when what we do, we stand in agreement. We had that, we had that love fest a couple of Sundays ago. I agree with God, but when faith connects. That's when miracles happen. Your faith got to agree. With some, I can have faith, but what do you have faith in? I don't have. I have faith in the strength of God to, for Him to give me strength to carry on another day. There you go. Yes.
and 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 people have to also get in mind what sacrifice is. Sacrifice is that sacrifice is not so much you you you're not trying to be seen with your sacrifice. Sacrifice is not a sacrifice shouldn't be showmanship. Sacrifice is, is something that comes from the heart first. It's a feeling from the heart first. Even if you don't have, I when he said come to sacrifice of praise. When you're going through something and you yo you are just you don't know what the next is where the next next is coming from. All you know is you're gonna praise him until you see until God helps you see what to do next. A sacrifice of praise comes from when you when 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 your hands when your when you when your body is just tired from going through, but then you just all up whatever strength I got, God, I'm giving it to you. Sacrifice of praise. I'm not doing this for showmanship. I'm not doing this to be seen. I'm not doing this for somebody to say, oh, Lord, she really, she really sacrificed it. She really doing this. She really, I don't care what nobody says. I'm not, I haven't, you know, a lot of times some people think that you, they just know your story. Or they think they know your story. And so that what they do, they judge your praise off of your story. Of what they think they know about your story. I I have to not care about what someone uh, perceives they know about me. I I thank God because He delivered me from people a while ago. Because if, unless God delivers you from people, you'll be so worried about what they think, and you'll for, you, it won't be your faith. It'll be what you're doing, what you think people want you to do. That will distort your faith when you want to do stuff because according to what you, what, people, what you want people to think about you. That will distort your faith. But when you focus on what God wants from you, that's when, because you want to please God so much. And, and, it's, and it's not so much that you see See things like his hand ain't always given given to you. When because you love him so much, you just know that he has walked you through some fire. And it wasn't that he gave you something; he walked you through something. A lot of times, people think that you go. It's a car. It's a house. It's it's, it's this. It's it's big old major things. But they didn't see what you were going through. But when God gave you strength to walk through that thing, didn't give you nothing. He gave you strength. He did give you something. He gave you strength to walk through it. But he didn't materialize anything for other people to see. But people think it's immaterial that you got to have faith for. Here it says the drought. And like I said, we've already talked about the lesson because that last paragraph was the lesson. But we're going to go through and and just itemize some things. The drought. Um, well, let me, I'm going to read about the drought so you get an understanding for those that's listening on Facebook and Zoom. It said famine occurs during, due to drought. Crop eating insects. Blight on farms or other environment, environmental factors. The famine recorded in 1 Kings 17 appeared in the land for an entirely different reason. Divine punishment. The prophet Elijah, the Tishbite, proclaimed to wicked King Ahab, that neither dew nor rain would fall on the earth for the next few years. Ahab and his evil wife, Jezebel, had sinned egregiously that God 
had even refused to send life-giving dew to the land. God commissioned Elijah to declare this severe judgment because too many people worshiped a false god called Baal. Many in the northern kingdom of Israel devoted themselves to Baal, believing he gave them rain and made their crops fertile. God intervened to show the people the identity of the one true God. If the people would not hunger and thirst after righteousness, they would find themselves starving and in desperate need of water. Then you go to the widow's desperate situation. And the first sentence in here, it says, our text reveals the terrible plight of the people, showing that even innocents suffer for the guilty. She, what did she do? That was Jezebel and them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they, um, they were they, throughout the lesson. They were saying that she, they don't. According to when you dig off into the the passage, she wasn't for, from the northern kingdom. I mean, she wasn't from the northern. She ended up suffering though. The famine. Because she was near there. So here it is. And it was a lot of widows. So here she had nobody to lean on. She didn't have that second income. She didn't have the extra, extra. Her and her, it was just her left with her son. And it said, we read of a widow woman and her son facing scourge of famine. Meager meals had kept them alive so far, but they suffered hunger, pains, and feared they would soon run out of food. They wondered what they would do. He, enco he encountered the woman while she was out getting wood for fire. And her thing was, she was, in her mind, I'm, I'm going to build this fire, and I'm going to see what I can cook up that would take us through, you know, another, you know, let me feed us at least for today. And she, and they considered that their last supper. And here it was, that she ran into Elijah. Now, they said while the widow and her son faced a daily struggle for food, Elijah benefited from divine intervention. Elijah drank from a brook. God sent ravens to feed him, breakfast and dinner. In contrast, the widow struggled for meals. Those encountering the story for the first time might wonder if miracles only happen for prophets. Can ordinary people be partakers of miracles? Yes, they can. God don't just use prophets. He uses ordinary people. You don't have to have a title for God to do a miracle. In matter of fact, you can look all day long and walk, and you will see miracles all day long. They just ain't told you their story. You don't know a miracle has happened until you get to know God, because God will reveal that's a miracle. God will show you what miracles are. You yourself, without a title sitting in the church, you are a miracle. You didn't know that bullet was going to come by you. you. It missed you. But as you may have heard about something, you just passed through and say, ooh, I was over there yesterday. Yeah, he didn't let it come to you. Guess what? You're not a prophet. You're not an evangelist. You're not a pastor. You're not nothing. But guess what? You're still a miracle. 
It said the story takes an odd turn when the prophet encounters the widow. Rather than immediately giving her the miracle she so desperately needed, he made a strange and seemingly unusual command. He told the widow to take the last of her ingredients and bake a small loaf of bread for him before making a final meal for her son and herself. Now, this was this was part I like. He said, now, most people might have refused such an outlandish request. Scripture, however, provides an interesting clue that may explain why the widow agreed to the outrageous command. First Kings 17 and 9 states the Lord had directed the woman to provide food for the prophet. He had talked to her already. He had unctioned her already. before he even asked. When the Lord impressed upon the woman to take care of the prophet, perhaps she thought her hunger pains had caused her to hear things. She may have wondered if her unplanned fast had made her delusional. Then the prophet appeared on the scene. See, this is before she saw him. This was before she saw him. So the Lord, this is why I say the Lord will work on both ends. And so, on some things, and then sometimes he'll do it just instant, right there in your face. When the Lord impressed upon a woman to take care, oh, I read the part. Then it said the, out, the outrage some readers feel when listening to Elijah's command a starving widow to feed him is normal. But we do not see what God sees. Our understandable human reaction to criticize the prophet for such an egregious breach of etiquette and common sense must bow, bow the knee to the sovereign plan of God. We must look past our natural responses and see spiritual. God had a greater plan in mind that went far beyond the widow's, the widow's current circumstances. She needed to trust in the Lord despite the overwhelming feeling that situation that the situation made no earthly sense. Remember, God had already spoken to the widow to sustain the prophet. How many times have we gotten instructions for something before the situation got through? You didn't understand it, but all of a sudden you put it in your pocket, and then when the situation got to you, you already had the solution to it when the situation got there. That's what God did for her. But here it is, just because he told her, don't mean she was going to choose to do it. You get what I'm saying? He unctioned her to do it. That didn't mean she had already chose to do it. And it said, I will trust God even when I don't see his plan. Then it said, we too face challenge to seeing past, seeing past our present plight. Like the woman, we might see the man of God approaching and feel that a miracle is walking down our parched, dusty road. And the Almighty, however, the Almighty, however, may put our trust to the test. Then it said, we can easily talk about our faith and trust in the Lord when living in a proper and prosperous time. But we must exercise our faith and trust in difficult circumstances as well. Since we walk by faith and not by sight, that's in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we must not allow our situation to overwhelm us. Sometimes we must also look past logic. Like most people, the widow likely would have 
had difficulty seeing a good reason to make bread for the prophet. But this is the part I highlighted. But the miracle, but for the miracle to occur, we must walk beyond the boundaries of logic. We must move beyond the boundaries of our own mind. I don't, when God speaks, he speaks beyond the boundaries of our mind. As First Lady just stated a little while ago, his mind is not, our, our thoughts are not his thoughts. So when we answer him, we must first respect the fact that he knows the end from the beginning. And he goes beyond the boundaries. Our mind capacity has boundaries. Even spiritually, we have boundaries. We're not all-knowing. We only go so far as God allows us to go. So we spiritually, we have boundaries. Until he releases us to go higher. We can, we can praise him. We can go into the glory. We, can, we do all those things. But there is a place in God when he says, when he says come higher, that's when we go higher. It says, of course, we should walk wisely when we step out by faith. But we must walk by faith. We must be sensitive to God's voice in order to prepare to do his will and receive his provision. You see how that works hand in hand. His will, his provision. His will, his provision. He said, according to his riches and glory. That's his provision. That works hand in hand. When you're in the will of God, you get his provision. Then it said, God's provision at Zarephath. Then it says, God provided for the woman and her son through the prophet's unique and strange demand. And if the story sounds odd so far, look a little further to at the location of Zarephath. Her city, Zarephath, forms the northern boundary of Canaan. Obadiah 1 and 20. We might think God miraculously intervened for an Israelite woman, but scripture points us toward the widow being a Canaanite. Perhaps a Phoenician. Jesus' teachings may shed further light on the woman's identity after declaring that no prophet is accepted in his own country. Jesus spoke of many widows living in the day of Elijah during the three and a half year drought. Nevertheless, God sent Elijah only to this Sidonian woman. Jesus coupled her story with the cleansing of another Israelite outsider, the former leper Naaman, the Caesarean in the New Testament. Jesus' teaching ignited the wrath of the people in the synagogue. They did not like hearing about the faith of people they viewed as outcasts from the kingdom of God. The unchosen had more faith. Then it says here, and it said, the widow's faith filled response. I love that title of the text. It's a message, and I don't know if you hear, and First Lady must have heard it. She must have heard it. I, I like it when people hear it like I hear it. You know, because just like when I said his, his will, his provision. I know she heard that one too. 
that you gotta hear certain things when God's bam. It'd be like a bam, you know. We almost done, but that you you gotta hear the bam. And it said the widow's field response, knowing that the widow likely did not have the, an Israelite pedigree, makes her story even more compelling. She responded in faith to the prophet's request, leading us to wonder if none of the Israelite widows would have done the same. While people in Jesus' day might have considered themselves superior to others, Jesus showed them they should humble themselves. The possibility exists that only this widow would have responded in faith to Elijah's request. Most likely, the Lord did not send Elijah to anyone else because the Almighty knew that only this widow would demonstrate great faith. Not just any faith. Great faith. With the direction of God to sustain her faith, the widow heeded Elijah's words. She took her last bit of meal, flour, and oil to make a loaf for Elijah. We speak, and I highlighted this part, we speak about something being an act of faith because faith requires action. First lady heard. See, I can hear the noise. Then it said, an act of faith also requires follow through. I love it when I read it. On our part. That right there stood out to me. If you can't convince me you got faith and you're not responding. If you have faith, you're going to respond to what God say do because you know what's going to be the outcome. His will, his provision. Go ahead, First Lady. You go. Uh, Pastor. <laughs> Is going to, pastor's going to read that scripture. Praise the Lord. This, that, that verse has come out of James 2. Starts at uh, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yeah, man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me my faith, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my, my works. Yes. Because it's, people can do a whole lot of motioning. Let me say that. People can do a whole lot of motioning. And it and what it does, it, it and I'm closing, what it does is that you can see somebody walking fast. That's right. Oh, and I'm going to use our sanctuary. From the sanctuary to the kitchen. They just moving, moving, moving. To the carnal eye, they's like, ooh, they just busy. They got, ooh, they doing a whole lot. They moving back and forth. And they got keys in their hand. Ain't like, unlike one though. Ain't did nothing. They just moving and walking. But when did you do what God told you to do? Are you moving to what God said? I, I'm not going to, just because when when he says, praise me, or when he says, he say, if you do this, this is what I will do. 
but I'm going to do a whole bunch of other things and not do that. He didn't ask me for the whole bunch of other things. He said, do this. If I, if I do this, he will do that. But here it is. I'm doing all this. Stuff. Oh, I'm going to do this, 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 this. That's not what he said. She did exactly what the prophet said do. And that was a sacrifice for her to do it. That's why he said he rewarded the widow's sacrifice with miraculous provision. She started with only the hope of a last meal. Afterwards, she had a perpetual meal ticket. The Lord kept filling her barrel of meal and cruise of oil. A cruise is a container, just so you know. A cruise is a container that they use to pour, that they, that, that they use to hold oil and, and you keep the oil. And it said, because they were not consumed, neither she nor her son fell prey to the ravages of famine. Each time the woman prepared a meal, she saw evidence of the power of trusting God. When she walked over to the meal barrel, God strengthened her faith once again. When she poured oil out of the cruise, she saw the anointed power of trust. When she gathered sticks for the fire, she did not do, she did so with joy, not fear. When she carried the meals to the table for her son and herself, her heart felt full of love and trust for God. See, things change when you when you move in what he said. Things change. You change. Because your faith has changed. Your faith has been ignited. Your her faith was strengthened. And it kept strengthening each time she went to the barrel. Because she did all she did was love on him some more and some more. Because she did, he did it. He did it. She didn't give no glory to somebody else because she knew who gave her the unction at first. Then it met with the word. The unction. The word that he gave her, that he put in it, that she that was an unction first, it met with the word that came with the prophet. Then it said the widow's outstanding example of faith and trust in God would encourage us to obey God and sacrifice according to his divine will. Say we, we never know when the Lord may direct us to meet a need of the church. For the church or someone in our community, the call to act may be a call to sacrifice. Then I'm going to just put what I uh, say, what I highlighted here. In the internalizing message, it says sometimes goodwill is God's will. I love these. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But it, these certain things, I'm telling you, I got so much out of the, the parts that I highlighted. It was, it was just crazy how that God bless you. It, it, it was crazy how God would talk to you through. It don't have to be big time sentences. It don't have to be big time things. He'll come in a sentence. He'll come in a still small voice. He will answer whatever you need. But when you ask him, and you have faith that he would answer, he, when he answered, what will your response be? Well, God bless you. We're going to turn it back into the hands. I hope you got something out of the lesson. Turn it into the hands of the pastor. Praise the Lord, saints. Another beautiful lesson taught by Evangelist Diane. Beautiful lesson. Uh, and, and I love it, too, because like she was saying earlier, how they keep on breaking up the lessons down more and more. The first, last meal. <laughs> Glory. 
Glory to God. And we see the faith of this of of the of the of of, of this woman for us how how that she uh, like you mentioned was saying how she met how the Lord unctioned her and then already had her had already unctioned her to let her know what to do and then turn around when the man, uh, she seen the prophet and he asked her she was already ready to do it even though it boggled her mind but she yet was ready to do it because she was already unctioned by God beautiful lesson beautiful lesson again we thank God for all that's said all that's all that's done he's an awesome God he keeps on doing great things and he gives us just what we need when we need it <laughs> glory to God but again first of all I want to say I'm, I'm glad to see all the women ladies back into in the house this morning thank God that you're back <laughs> thank God to see you oh Lord it's, it is ugly. and we are glad that you did enjoy yourself but we are so glad that you're here and back in the house of the Lord thank God but this time we're going to stand and be dismissed. But we thank God again for allowing us to be here one more time. Thank God for his strength and what he keeps on doing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen.